Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. the GSMC Travel Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, AC. And I'm your co-host, Sarah. And today we are talking about Siem Reap, Cambodia. Cambodia, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is not something that I have, um, not a country that I personally have put in my imaginary travel book, not for any specific, I mean, I don't have anything against Cambodia, it's just not something I thought of. Yeah, I mean... It's uh, it's not any place. I mean, I haven't been any of these places yet, but <laughs> it's not probably the first place that people think about when they go, mm-hmm. even though Siem Reap is listed as a perfect destination for first time travelers to Asia. Oh, nice. And so. before when we were talking, you, you mentioned Thailand and Thailand is someplace that I've thought of going. So right. I think, as we also mentioned, Cambodia just has a few negative connotations because I think of the killing fields, which mm-hmm. we're not going to really get no. into here. It's not a history podcast, but no. um, that's only one minor part. <laughs> right. It's not like you can't travel there now. Yeah, it's it's uh. You know, like you wouldn't go to Germany, not go to Germany just because of its history. In the same place, you shouldn't not go to Cambodia just because of its history. Right. And Siem Reap, and I believe it is pronounced Siem Reap. Okay. I keep wanting to read it as Siem Reap. Right. But Siem is uh, an old Cambodian word for Siam, which Mm -hmm. is now Thailand. And the name for the town comes from, uh, I believe, a victory they had over thailand and taking that back from thailand oh okay so i believe that's where that comes from okay we're we've been on a movie kick so i'm just gonna have to say siam just makes me think of the king and i of course it does (laughs) i didn't i also didn't know that siam and thailand were the same place till i was i think an adult oh well sure i mean you know that's not something that really gets pointed out in our well we i didn't have geography but our history classes here right but anyways cambodia is actually officially the kingdom of Cambodia, mm-hmm. and it has an elective constitutional monarchy, which, which I find kind of fascinating, right? Because it, it's always interesting to find any monarchy that's not the British one, because that's the only one we generally know about. <laughs> but there's actually there's a lot more in the world, and you just don't really think about that. But um, during the Khmer Rouge, Khmer Rouge, the the, the killing fields that we're really not going to get into, actually ninety five percent of Cambodia's Buddhist temples were completely destroyed. Oh, that is very, it's very just sad. Sort of heartbreaking, especially when you see they're so beautiful. The, so many of the them. temples around Siem Reap because it's just like, oh my gosh, it, 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 they're amazing to see, and we'll talk about it a little later. Um, but Siem Reap is also regularly ranked in the top ten best destination list by places like TripAdvisor and Wanderlust Magazine and Travel and Leisure. And um, it's it's hot. <laughs> it's definitely hot there. It's a more tropical place, jungles and humidity and heat. Like, I think the lowest temperature, like record low is like 53 degrees or Jeez. something like that. I'm sure everybody or was all 60s. bundled up. I'm just like, what? What? Wow. <laughs> That's the record low of like ever in the history. Yeah. That's amazing. But that November to March is the peak tourist season. April and May can get very hot, but then June to October is the wet season where places might actually get, you know, a few feet of water. So you definitely want to plan your travel appropriately if you're going to Cambodia. I mean, if you don't mind getting very, 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 very wet on a daily basis, then, you know, go during the wet season. But I don't know. But a lot of things might be closed also during the wet season if, you know, the roads are unpassable. And then it's like, I came here and I can't get to all the things I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And there's some really really amazing sites 
around this town, which is in the sort of northern northwest. I had to stop and think about my directions. <laughs> the northwestern area of Cambodia. And obviously, because of the name, you know, near Thailand, as opposed to on the other side near Vietnam. Um, it's got a lot of colonial and Chinese style architecture in the old French Quarter and around the old market. So again, in the last uh, episode, we were talking about Quebec and old French towns. This would be slightly different because uh, French architecture kind of was different in colonial parts. And part of that might just have been, it's hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. the, the castle that worked really well in France with its cool temperate weather might not work so well where the like record low is 50 something. <laughs> right. Although, you know, stone can be cooling. I, you can, I mean, but the temples have are different... all stone, but there, there's clearly a different style going right. on. And you probably have different building materials. And plus some culture would, I'm sure there's crossover. So those things all affect how things might look. Right. And this town is sort of, it's the second largest town after uh, the capital, but it's a very big town for tourists. I believe it's like 50% of the economy is based off of tourism mm-hmm. here. And it's got a lot of things to offer. There are museums. There's the traditional Espera dance performances. There's a Cambodian cultural village, hmm. which I'd, I'd really like to go to. Yeah. There's also souvenir and handicraft shops, silk farms, rice paddies in the countryside if you want the more rural sites as opposed to the city ones but it also is trying to become a more modern day place so along with the historical sites it also has a cosmopolitan drinking and dining scene there's a place (laughs) called pub street oh which is literally like one street (laughs) well sure but that's where all the sort of the drinking the bars the clubs are if that's more your thing when you go on vacation (laughs) it is there Uh it's it's a specifically small street but, well, it's, but it's there it's there you can find it uh, there's also floating villages which i think are really cool and kind of wondering how you live on those like i get that you could but at the same time wouldn't you feel nervous about your house like falling into the water while you slept well i, I don't know i've seen them on on the travel channel and stuff and people seem right. to do just fine it's and, definitely a different way to live. Yes. And uh, this place, CM Rep, and the temples around it has been used for filming. So there is the temple Top Home, and I apologize for my pronunciation if that's not correct, which is where part of Tomb Raider was filmed. It's the original the, or the new one? The Angelina Jolie one. Okay. Um, whatever. Which one that was? The first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, where there's, you know, the temple with like the tree coming out of it. Mm -hmm. have you seen that it's been a long long time since i saw it that scene that temple looks amazing like when i first saw that i i kind of knew it was real but at the same time i was just like really (laughs) really oh i think i think i've read that angelina jolie really fell in love with that area too and visits even after you know she filmed right. there and and thought it was beautiful and and continues visiting i could be wrong about that but no and it is it's very beautiful and it also kind of reminds me of um king louis palace from jungle book the original the oh. animated one mm-hmm. um which may or may not have been based off of that i couldn't find a source to tell me one way or the other what the animators were looking at when they made that palace but in king louis palace which is uh you know, stone, but sort of broken down, and you do see the, the plants and the trees coming up. Mm-hmm. It does look a lot like these, the temples around the, the Angkor, um, the Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom, which are centuries and centuries old and are, in, you know, sort of in the middle of the jungle. And the mm-hmm. jungle's like, hey, this is our place. We'll right. take this back. Right. It, 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 it grows, yes. It definitely does. Uh. So if, if you haven't seen this before, it, it is definitely worth a look just even on Google, to see these pictures of, especially Ta Prom, which is the one, the, the most famous one, I think, for the trees growing through the jungle. And, I mean, the, the temple. And it was actually rediscovered um, by a French, I want to say it was an archaeologist, but I could be wrong. Um, and they they try to sort of, you know, tear away a lot of the the plant growth mm-hmm. for the temples, but that one they found was so stunning. They just left it. Wow. And it, it really is. Ph- photographers love it. And it looks really amazing, especially like in black and white with the, the stark between, you know, nature and man and all that. Right. And it, now I am singing King of the Jungle in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely did have that in my head for a while. Cause I, looked, I looked that scene up to see if I could check. Cause I, 
I thought of it even just without <laughs> knowing. Uh-huh. And so I looked that scene up to see if that was the case and watching it. I'm like, it could be maybe because a lot of the temples are Hindu. There are some Buddhist ones because there was a monarch or two who turned Buddhist. Mm-hmm. Turned Buddhist? That's not what I mean, but uh, became, Buddhist, became Buddhist. Converted to Buddhism. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. Um, and then his successor was still Hindu. And so he decided, no, I'm going to tear those down and or convert them back to Hinduism. Right. And India also has a lot of Hinduism, which is where the Jungle Book is set. So the the architectural styles may be similar for that reason. I'm not quite sure. I know they are... Uh, sort of based off of a holy mountain and that's why the uh the temple domes are made the way they are to to represent the peaks of that mountain Hmm. yes interesting very very interesting and you know just the the whole back and forth on religious sites and you get this all over the world with all kinds of different religions Mm -hmm. just just, you get different different rulers who are different religions so they take over the site and it's just fascinating to see kind of the the progression through the years you can see almost like rings of a tree you can see how where the shifts happen yes and actually uh they remind me a bit of the sort of the pharaohs of egypt and how each of them felt the need to sort of build their own pyramid and to Mm -hmm. leave their own, that that seems sort of what the old Cambodian kings were doing was each of them built their own sort of temple as sort of a sign of their rule, but also for the gods. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are they buried there, like in the pyramids? Some some are, but that that wasn't the main main reason for it. Right. But um, anyways, we're going to take a short break. And when we get back, we are going to be talking about the main temple, the Angkor Archaeological Park. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Travel Podcast. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back. You're listening to the GSMC Travel Podcast. And today we are talking about Siem Reap, Cambodia, which serves as a gateway town to Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom, which are very, very famous temples in Cambodia, possibly the most famous temples in Cambodia. And it's not that they're one single temple. There's mm-hmm. thousands of temples in the Angkor Archaeological Park. So mm-hmm. it's it's a set of temples, not just one specific one. Which makes it a, an awesome destination because you're not just going for one temple. You can see lots of them. Right. <laughs> so uh, Angkor Archaeological Park is was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992. I believe we talked about UNESCO World Heritage Sites on our last uh, episode. Yes, we did, which um, apparently now we are we are we are traveling in our imaginations to places that are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I'm okay with that. Wasn't the main theme, but sure. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. the, that's part of the whole reason for UNESCO World World Heritage Sites is places that people want to travel. Yes. Um, so the temples, again, lots of temples, can be broadly categorized into four groups. So there's Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. I'm not sure that pronunciation is correct, but that's what I'm going with. And those are sort of the main ones. They're the grand ones and the ancient capital next to it. So Angkor Wat is the temple and Angkor Thom is the capital. Mm -hmm. But then they also offer these circuits of temples as sort of like a a tour special. Mm -hmm. You can say there's the little circuit or the big circuit. And they actually have French names because Cambodia was once, you know, a French colony colony Mm -hmm. property not what i mean (laughs) but uh so they also le petit circuit circuit uh yeah i'm not i don't know if i've ever actually said that word in french le petit circuit and the grand circuit i spelled the exact same way as circuit so we we did this circuit we did this on the last one i still can't speak french that was a whole (laughs) nother episode (laughs) but uh look the little circuit takes in the major sites to the east of angkor and the big circuit takes in the major sites north and further out and cool. then there's also the Rolos group, which is 15 kilometers east from Siem Reap, 
as along the national highway. And then there are some even more outer lying temples that are over 20 kilometers from Angkor Wat. So there's a lot of temples and various different ways to see which ones, depending on which ones you want to go to. Mm -hmm. But they are still used as temples. Uh, Right. So there are some, and these pictures are really wonderful, but you'll often see in pictures um, groups of Buddhist monks in front of the temples, Mm -hmm. even though some of them were originally Hindu, (laughs) but that they are still used uh, for Buddhist monks and for people to actually pray in. Right. Um, And there are, like, there are people who will offer you incense if you want to, like, help with the prayers or whatever, but that may actually be a scam. So that was one of the things in reading this that they said, don't do, because if you take the incense, then they'll ask you for money for it afterwards. But also, uh, you know, these are still temples where there are people using them as temples, as places of worship, which means you you need to remember to be respectful. It's not just a tourist site where you can go and act any way you would like. You you still need to be respectful of what's happening in that space. Yes. And they actually do have a dress code. So both men and women have to have their shoulders and knees covered out of respect, but their head uncovered. So don't wear a hat inside the temple, Mm -hmm. but do make sure you are wearing, you know, a shirt with sleeves. And even if you're wearing shorts, because it's be hot, make sure they're long shorts so that your knees are covered. Right. This is considered respectful. But uh, most of the tourists tend to see the sunrise at Angkor Wat, which is, I've heard, just absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. But that the temple itself is better viewed in, like, afternoon light. Oh, okay. So there's sort of a set routine where they go, they see the sunrise, and then they go see other temples, and then they come back to Angkor Wat in the (laughs) afternoon. So Sarah and Stacey's introvert traveling tip for the day is to (laughs) go between sunrise and mid-afternoon. You might not see it in the best light, but there will be fewer people. (laughs) I mean, it's hard to... You'll never not have people, because it's it's a very popular site. But to minimize the people in the foreign country you're traveling to. (laughs) Just trying to help you out there. It's also helpful um, upon arriving in Siem Reap to find a good tuk-tuk driver. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a different name for this, but even Cambodians tend to use tuk-tuk. So we're going to call it that, which are these sort of um, not quite carriages attached to motorcycles. Yeah. It's it's, it's motorized. um, What's the one where they run? Oh, geez. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, that. <laughs> oh, seriously. It's It'll the, come to me probably right. like an hour after we're done with this podcast. It is the motorized version of that. Um, and finding a good one and relying on them from the duration of the trip can be very helpful. They will know a lot of the locations. They'll know the best ways to get there. And the prices are actually really, really cheap. It's usually about like a dollar or two, you know, uh, U.S. dollars just to go like completely across town. Mm-hmm. It, it may go up if you have like a lot of people in your party. Uh, they they say you can haggle and that actually haggling is very common there. But I'm sort of like a dollar or two. <laughs> right? I have, no, you can have it. I know, I know. But haggling is part. You know, it's not necessarily part of our culture, so right. it it makes me feel uncomfortable. But it's it's actually accepted and kind of a sign of almost respect in some cultures. Yes. So. Oh, not my comfort zone, but... Right. But uh, to make sure and find a good one, there are some that speak English pretty well, and more and more that's becoming the case because this is becoming such a touristy place. Mm -hmm. But there are others who will try and um, scam you, or they'll be part of a... a, There's there's a number of uh, sort of scam setups in the town that you're supposed to be aware of. Um, So especially to agree on a price beforehand... Sure. Because it, it 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 will be really terrible if, you know, you think it's whatever and then you get there and then you're arguing about it. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just like $2, it's like that, that's going to make it not feel as awesome. Yes. But they also say because these tuk-tuks are open, to be aware of your belongings because there are a lot of people who sort of make their living riding around on motorbikes and just snatching things out of people's hands from tuk-tuks. Oh, jeez. Which so, just, yeah, don't don't be uh, taking pictures and selfies with your hand out. Uh, keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all and times. All, and all personal objects <laughs> and your bag and your smartphone and make sure, you know, you've got a good hold on that and people can grab it easily. But really, that's that's a good advice Everywhere. for traveling anywhere. Yeah. Don't just, you, you've got to be aware of your surroundings. You've got to be aware of your personal items. Don't mm-hmm. just, you know, stick your wallet in your back pocket. <laughs> you got to be smart about these things. 
But I think we'd probably not be so used to it because if we're traveling somewhere, it's, let's take a taxi, let's take a Uber, let's take a Lyft. Those mm-hmm. are enclosed mm-hmm. spaces. It would be very hard for someone to come up and grab my cell phone out of like a taxi. <laughs> right. But it's very easy to do in uh, CMRIP. So just to be aware of that. Um, there are other things they talk about, like there's a baby milk scam. Um, th- they definitely discourage giving money to children, even though mm-hmm. you, you you probably want to and you think it'll help. They also say that like this with this baby milk scam where a child will come up and say, oh, I need baby milk for a... Uh, younger sibling or whatever we don't have any milk we don't have any formula right please go into the store and buy it and you think oh that's better because at least i'm not giving them money you know straight out Mm -hmm. but oftentimes what will happen is when you're gone they'll sell that back to the store Mm -hmm. and get the money that way or they have a a thing going on with the store where they sell it back to the store and then they split the money 50 50 huh so you seem like you feel like you're helping but you might not actually be I didn't mean to be so down there, <laughs> but just just things to be aware of when you're traveling because it is Siem Rep and the main tourist areas of Cambodia are, you know, modernizing. You do have Pub Street and all that, but the rest of Cambodia is still rather rural mm-hmm. and and not, you know, the same quality of living that we're used to here. So you do have some people, you know, trying to make their way they'll perhaps the only way they know how yep so uh sorry about that we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna take a short break and hopefully not be as depressing when we come back so stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc travel podcast Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight. Straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back. You're listening to the GSMC Travel Podcast. Before our break, uh, we were trying very, very hard <laughs> to figure out the word for tuk tuk. We couldn't figure it out. And Sarah finally figured it out. Sarah, what is it? Rickshaw. Rickshaw, yes. Tuk tuks are sort of rickshaws attached to motorbikes. They're motorized rickshaws. It, it came to me in a flash of inspiration. Yes. But uh, tuk tuks are a good way to get around uh, CMRF if you're ever, ever there. Um, but because Cambodia is so hot, tropical tropical location never cold which would i guess would be nice if you're from like you know a snowy place for winter Mm -hmm. i'm i'm less so and i hate our summers here which are triple degrees so i'm not really looking forward to go to another hot place well plus it's hot and humid right yes yes i would imagine but obviously when you're there you would definitely want sunscreen especially when you're visiting the temples because there isn't really a lot of shade and covering Mm mm-hmm with a lot of those, and you know you're not supposed to have a hat on, right? In the temple, out of respect, so you definitely sunscreen's kind of your only source of protection. But a tip that I found that I actually thought was very interesting is for packing to use a sunscreen stick instead of liquid sunscreen. Oh, less risk of spillage. Yes. Yep. Yep. But it also means uh, you can take it in your carry on mm-hmm. because, of course, you know. In America, we have the uh, the liquid uh, limits, three point whatever ounces. Or yeah, it's gone up a little bit. It, it used to be something. two. It's three something now. Um, but even with that, that little amount of sunscreen 
will probably not do not it. last very long. That would possibly be maybe one day in Cambodia and then you're done. Whereas with the sunscreen stick, because it's not liquid, you can just carry it in your carry-on. Hmm. But is it like uh, when you leave your chapstick in the hot car, does it melt? Oh, yes, probably. I mean, I don't know. I haven't actually used liquid, I mean, uh, sunscreen, a sunscreen stick. I just picture like um, <laughs> a glue stick, <laughs> only, no. only sunscreen. Don't get your glue stick and your sunscreen confused. Some of them do look like glue sticks. Some of them do look like deodorants. Oh, um, um, sure. And it's it's that same sort of way. Like if you've ever ha- left your deodorant in a car mm-hmm. where it kind of, it's melty, but not melty. Yeah. Sunscreen would probably get a little more on the melty side because of what it's made of. Whereas deodorant is talcum and aluminum and stuff, stuff, <laughs> <laughs> less liquidy stuff, whatever that is. Right. But yes, that because um, having the sunscreen stick, you don't have to w- risk billage. You can put it in your carry on, especially if you're not taking a checked bag. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I don't have a checked bag, so I can't do sunscreen. And right. then you won't have to buy it there because, of course, any place you go where you would definitely want sunscreen, if it's a touristy place. They will sell it to you, but it will definitely be upmarked. Right. And, you know, it will be different than what you're used to. So if you're used to certain things and and you are concerned about, like, what's in your sunscreen, some people are, that you might want to make sure that you have enough of whatever brand you prefer to last your whole trip. Yeah. You kind of want to find the one that suits you. Like, I totally want to use natural sunscreens, but... They just have, they leave that white cast. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I'm not trying to look like Casper. So, whereas I'm already so pasty, you can't tell. (laughs) (laughs) So, if I find a really good sunscreen stick, I would definitely want to bring that along because I know I'm not going to look crazy while on my vacation and will be protected from the sun. All good things. Yes. And so, our site for today is Mm wejourney.co. This site is pretty cool. Their motto is travel with purpose. And they create impact travel experiences in international and domestic de- destinations. Okay, so what does that mean exactly, an impact travel experience? So it's sort of um, both a vacation, but also volunteering. So this interested me because in Cambodia, one of the things a lot of people want to do is sort of go and visit orphanages. Mm-hmm. But that's another thing that they discourage because a lot of orphanages are only interested in the money. Mm-hmm. And so a good number of the children in those orphanages do actually have parents. They've just been taken away from them because we need children to fill our orphanages. I have heard that. For yes. visitors to I've actually to even do. heard of families who have adopted and then they, yes. they find out that their, chi- their their child has a mother somewhere. Yes. Or a mother and a father. Yeah, I, I, I saw an article where this is a problem in China as well, hmm. where children are taken from their parents to to be adopted overseas because that gives more money. Mm-hmm. So they discourage going and visiting orphanages because you don't know, you know, how real this orphanage is or are these children really in need or is it just sort of a setup to get the money? Hmm. But if you are one of those people who does still want to do something good with your traveling, We Journey is a good thing for that. So they have six to nine day travel experiences split into two parts. The first part is an immersive impact work where you, you know, you build houses or you do some sort of voluntary work, Mm -hmm. the the kind you kind of expect to travel with or like if you join Greenpeace for. Right. But then the second half, after two days of deep impact work, you travel to a destination location and then you just sort of vacation. Fun. So it's helpful in a lot of ways. I mean, you you get to make an impact. You also don't have to plan it as much. You know, if you you want someone else to plan your vacation, you don't want to deal with the details. So it's kind of a win-win there. Yeah, and you don't have to choose if, oh, okay, I'm going, you know, wherever to volunteer. I'm going wherever to learn about the culture. You get both. Mm Mm-hmm. It, it's never it's because it, it, it would suck you know if you're like god i really really want to go to this place because it looks so cool but i'll feel bad if i don't do something <laughs> good for other people right that would kind of put a, a, a damper on your vacation yes so uh we journey.co is a mission-driven for-profit bu- public benefit corporation <laughs> you can do it stacy <laughs> <laughs> i know words um this is a relatively new legal status that ensures that we journey can give equal weight to both the mission and the shareholder interests and huh. i think this i remember hearing about this um in regards to ben and jerry's which had the whole thing about a lawsuit the shareholders i think took the founders to court mm-hmm. to make them accept accept a really big high bid 
because mm-hmm. they wanted the money and as a corporation they're required to you know keep their shareholders interest right for right. money there but they ben and jerry's was started with this you know mission yes and they wanted to stay true to that and they felt they couldn't with the shareholders and so they're now this legal status for benefit corporations that lets you balance both of those nice so we journey is one of those okay and i did look on the site there is a trip to cambodia mm. but it do not know where specifically, and there is a wait list for it. Okay, makes sense. So if that is something that interests you, and it doesn't have to be Cambodia, there are other places as well, you should try wejourney.co. Yes, you should. And on that note, we wish all in for today. Thanks for listening to the GSMC Travel Podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From travel to health and wellness to entertainment and life and happiness to sex and relationships. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you. And we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast.